Hello there and welcome to another Blazor short tutorial about radio buttons this time because with .NET 5 Microsoft introduced the input radio group and the input radio built-in component to Blazor WebAssembly and you can use this component in the edit form and let's have a quick look already to the page as you can see here and then in a second to Visual Studio the thing is I stole this from myself, kinda, because this is part of the uh, Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp, and I'm currently working on the update uh, with .NET 5. I know it is about time, but still I'm working on the update. And as you can see here, there is a select box. This is the input select component of uh, Blazor WebAssembly. And in the bootcamp, by the way, this banana here, maybe you're thinking, what the heck is going on here with this banana? This is the only resource we're using in this bootcamp. We're building an online browser game where you can build uh, a, uh, an army of, of fighters, like, as you can see here, knights, archers, and mages. And in here, we uh, can use a select box up on registration to choose which kind of unit we want when we start building or when we start with this browser game. Anyways, long story short, we have a select box here and to do the exact same thing, choosing a starting unit, we can use radio buttons now. Isn't that great? So let's go to Visual Studio real quick. There's the package manager console and this is how the whole registration form looks like. And if you hear crazy sounds in the back, this is my son, just so you know. And uh, now here, this select, this input select can actually be replaced with radio buttons. And to do that, real quick, we can we can actually replace this stuff, or we just do it one after another. I would say we remove this, and we do it without replacing because maybe that's a better way to learn, right? So the first thing we need is an input radio group it's always a group first and in this radio group then we can use input radio components for all the possible selections or the available selections what i want to do here is set this uh, or give this thing an id for the label because as you can see here on top we already have a label so this is the start unit and we bind already this input radio group to a certain value, bind value, and in our case, this will be the user start unit ID. And of course, I have to tell you what the heck is the start unit ID. Now, we've got the model down here in the code block. This is a user, and the class is user register. So we use this model for the registration process. And here now, we've got an integer value the start unit ID. Don't get confused, please don't get confused by all the other stuff here. This is validation and so on. And maybe I will make a short tutorial about validation as well. But just so you know, this is the important thing here, the start unit ID. This is what we want to set. This is an integer. And this is what we're using here. Where is it now? In the radio group, there it is, the start unit ID. And the available options then will be provided by a service and you can see the service here in the client project we've got the unit service and there is a list of available units we can build a knight an archer and a mage they have different values for attack defense and so on and uh, not only we can build them but we can choose them up on registration all right i hope this makes sense now and Additionally to binding this value, I just want to give this a class so it looks a bit different, a bit prettier with form control like that. And now you have the option to either say, okay, I want to add an input radio and actually we can close it like that and say the value because the input radio component has a value parameter and the value for instance is one and then i say this is the knight and then we copy this give this 
2 for the archer and so on or you've seen it with the select box we can of course use a for each and with the for each we can say okay with the current unit here in our collection and the collection is actually the unit service units just to show you again we inject the unit service here and there was the array of units and now down here again we say input radio close it already and the value now is the unit unit id and then we can give or add the title of the unit like that and after that we add a break and here's also a break, so it looks a bit better. Let's save this and have a look already. It is rebuilding, this is nice. Sometimes this does not work, I have no idea why. And we've got our radio buttons. I really don't like that we get no space here between the actual button and the text. And the only solution I found so far was adding a span, really, because just adding spaces does not work. But what we can do is, again, add a space and then move it here and then add a class or a style. I know inline styles, again, I do this for learning purposes, but actually you shouldn't use inline styles. I leave this up to you really. And here we say padding left, five pixels for instance, save this again, it is rebuilding and now we can choose our starting unit isn't that great and when we want to see it in the console i have to enter something here and test at example.com a username a password they have to match and then i can register and here we see the beautiful new character isn't that nice yeah, and that's already it. This is how you build an input radio group with radio buttons using the input radio component of Blazor WebAssembly. I hope you learned something. If so, thank you very much for clicking the like button, maybe even subscribing to my channel and activating the bell so you get a notification for for new videos when a new video is uploaded. Maybe you also want to subscribe to my newsletter to get the latest information of YouTube, my YouTube channel and uh, new courses, discounts to courses, early access to courses, whatever in your inbox. And of course, thank you very much to everyone who supports me and my channel and, and I, essentially also my, my family by buying us or me a coffee because I really need coffee because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you very much for your support. I really, really, really appreciate that. And the last thing, maybe you wanna dive deeper into Blazor WebAssembly already. As I said, I'm working on the update and I promise when .NET 6 is out, I will again re-record the complete course. So maybe you wanna have a look at the Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp. Here is the info card check this one out because that's a two hour preview here on YouTube or just check out the link in the video description already and then you're able to enroll to this course. Thank you very much for your time. I see you next time. Take care.